created for us. So what we, um, we work with 40 families in India who are allowed to work in their village rather than coming to manufacturing sites or big cities. So we, our blocks are a little more expensive because we have somebody who goes and hands out the jobs. So he goes to the villages and he says to the carpenter, are you working? Do you have work for your family? Yes. Okay, you don't get woodblock jobs. You go to the next guy, you go to the next carpenter, are you working? Can you buy food for your family? No, I can't. Okay, then I need you to make these wood blocks. You have 45 to 60 days to make them, and I'll come back around, pick the blocks up, and pay you. So it's a way of working honorably and with a skilled job and taking care of their family. And the more wood blocks we buy, the better it is for all of us, <laughs> including me. And we, um, we order and get wood blocks every two to three months. So in artistic artifacts, you can always find an evolving patterns and supplies of them that's around. So that is a really important question of where do the wood blocks come from? Because we're also about, artistic artifacts is all about supporting families. A lot of our, what you don't see here is Indonesian fabrics. We import hand-drawn panels that are like art quality paintings and they're a very much a um, cooperative family oriented business so we're supporting them um, our fabrics are supporting them so it's all a way of artists helping artists it doesn't necessarily have to be in the United States it can be all over the world because we're global now so um, that's something that's just very important a big part of what artistic artifacts is so talk about the mat. All right, yes. Talk about the mat. The mat, there's a couple of different ways, but there's a certain, the mat is success or failure of whether your blocks will work or not block. block. And this mat is $4. So it's a low investment, but it will totally make or break it. And you can't, like I've tried a mouse pad. Mouse pad's too hard. I've tried um, the thin foam mats that you get at Michael's or whatever these chain stores are, does is not good enough. So you need some thickness to it. And what the whole purpose of the mat is, is to compress so that it gives you even pressure and even printing, and that's what's gonna make your print work well. So, I like that. All right, and I'm a fabric girl, so I print mostly on fabric, but you can print on papers. So if you just think about what we just said about the mat, that you want it to push, you can't print on a cardstock. Cardstock's not going to give you enough, but you can print on a lot of these handcrafted papers, and they'll work great. Like deli paper? Deli paper works, tissue paper. I print on tissue paper all the time. And mulberry paper, yes, anything that's got some give to it, all, especially those handmade. And um, tissue paper is really awesome because you can print all over tissue paper and then you can cut it out and apply it to your journal or whatever, your collage, and then it, it, the tissue paper goes um, see-through. Matte medium or gel medium makes it kind of disappear. So, All right. I also, I use this really nice um, acrylic paint that has some body to it. So if you can see... Is that fabric paint? It is fabric paint, but it doesn't matter. Fabric paint works on paper. But the point, what it is important is that there's body. There, you have some too. And I have my very expensive sponge tool. Um, we, I cut them up. I use them in smaller things rather than using them in big. And you can go... You, I do not like to use cosmetic sponges. Those are highly... They just suck all your paint up. These are less... Um, you can get them in Home Depot, the big, large car wash sponges, we call them, and you cut them apart, it's the, and it's the best thing. Now, it does take a little bit of time to get your rhythm down. You've got your rhythm is, how much paint do I put on? All right, that takes a little bit, but that's all I'm doing. I'm dabbing, and you can mix paints. I can put multiple colors together and mix it there. So... I have my paint here, this, mm, ah, it's easy, it's easy, it's just instant, so, but you like did a little pressure, did you? I do, yes, and I tend to, when I work, period, I tend to stand, so, um, I've got my body weight into it. So you turn that. 
I did turn it. <clears throat> this is how they work with um, batik patterns. Is mostly if you if this was a copper chop, there would be points on either side of it that um, integrate and where to in. yeah where to line it up. And I'm sure woodblock artists in India who have do this on a daily basis are working with the same thing. That somewhere in this design is a way to link it up. So when you're working on fabric, then what do you do with it? After, um, do you have to heat set it? Yes, you do have to heat set it. I let it dry completely, and then I heat set it with a dry iron. Um, and some people say, does it matter? Do I iron it from the back or the front? Doesn't matter. You can put a Teflon sheet over it. But once it's dry, your iron should be safe. So.